the God of the mountains is the God of the valleys. When things go wrong, he makes them right. For the God of the good times is the God of the bad times, the God of the day is the God of the night. Can you try that by yourself? On to go. The God of the mountains is the God of the valley. When things go wrong, he makes them right. For the God of the good times is a good is a God of the bad times too. And the God of the day is the God of the night. For the God of the mountains is the God of the valleys. When things go wrong, he makes them right. For the God of the mountains is the God of the valleys. For the God of the good times is the God of the bad times. The God of the day is the God of the night. For the God of the mountains is the God of the valleys. When things go wrong, he makes them right. For the God of the good times is the God of the bad times. And the God of the day is the God of the night. Try it by yourself. Won't you go? He's the God of the... And when things go wrong, he makes them right. For the God of the mountains, of the good, he the God of the bad times, and the God of the day, is the God of the night, the God of the mountains, is the God of the valleys. When things go wrong, he makes them right. For the God of the good times, is the God of the bad times, the God of the day, is the God of the... For the God of the mountains, is the God of the valleys, when things go wrong, he makes them right. For the God of the good times is the God of the bad times. The God of the day is the God of the night. For the God of the mountains is the God of the valleys. When things go wrong, he makes them right. For the God of the good times is the God of the bad times. The God of the day is the God of the night. 
Try that now. Ah, for the good, la 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 la, for the good of the good of the mountains is the good of the valleys. Touch over again now, once you go, la 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 la. You know, we're talking about these very lost times and painful times and difficult times and power for the present hour. And I want to tell you that whether it's a mountain or the valley, good times or bad times or the day or the night, the same God will see you through. Yeah. And you know, tonight I'm going to talk to you about intercession from the throne room. And whatever problem you have tonight, today, this year, forget about it. There is a God of the mountain top, a God in the valley. And when things go wrong in your body, in your health, in your life, goes wrong in your company, goes wrong anywhere around, even in the church, it makes them right because. The God of the good times is the God of the bad times. And the God of the day is the God of the night. For the God of the mountains is the God in the valley. When things go wrong, he makes them right. For the God of the good times is the God of the bad times, the God of the days, the God of the night. Can we stand up now for the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. When things go wrong, he makes them right. For the God of the good times is the God of the bad times. And the God of the day is the God of the night. Why don't you pray and tell the Lord that you know God is going to solve your problem. Mountain top or valley or day or night or good times or bad times. The same God and he is there for you. And tonight he's going to roll all those problems away. Dry your tears away. Dry all those confusions away in your life. Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. When things go wrong. It makes them right. For the God of the good times is the God of the bad times. And the God of the day is the God of the night. Trust the Lord. The God of the day is the God of the night. The God of the mountain is the God of the valley. When things go wrong, it makes them right. For the God of the good times is the God of the bad times too. And the God of the day is the God of the night. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you for all our brothers, all our sisters, all the youths, 
or the children or the fathers and mothers or the pastors overseers and everybody lord our workers our singers our orchestra choir we thank you for everyone ushers and security people kitchen workers everybody lord we come to celebrate the power of the lord tonight in jesus name and lord we're going to discover anyone in the valley you'll bring us up any one of the mountain, you'll keep your sunshine upon us in Jesus' name. Anyone passing through good times, now I pray your good time will never end in Jesus' name. And if you are passing any through, through any bad time, I pray that tonight your bad time will be turned around in Jesus' name. Your day of prosperity will never end, your day of joy will never end. And your day of success will never end. Deliverance and dominion every day for you in Jesus' name. Your night of adversity is turned around. And your night of sorrow is turned around. Your night of tears turned around. And the night of impossibility turned around in Jesus' name. The song of the Lord will always be in your mouth. The joy of the Lord always in your heart. And the victory on the mountain in the valley. The victory in good times and bad times. And the victory also in the day and the night will be for you every time in Jesus' name. I pray that every one of you will receive the spirit of the conqueror. You will conquer. You have conquered already. You'll keep on conquering for the rest of your life. Good time, bad time, mountain, valley, day, night, God will never leave you. He'll see you through. Lord, confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. I see that deeper life people, they only clap at the end of the meeting. When it's beginning, no, we don't clap. Put your hands together and clap for Jesus. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Clap your sorrows away. Clap the night away. And clap the sickness away. And clap all those things of the devil. Clap everything away. You are victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you and remain seated in the blessing of the Lord. Tonight we're talking about irresistible prayer from the throne room. Irresistible prayer from the throne room. We're looking at Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. That's telling us where Jesus is at this time. What Jesus has at this time. What authority belongs to Jesus at this time. And he says all power, all authority belongs unto him. Mark chapter 16 verse 19. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them. He was received up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God. That's his place. That's his position. He's sitting right now on the throne. And from that throne room, he's making intercession for you and for me and for his church. That's why we're talking about this prayer. Irresistible prayer. From the throne room because jesus christ was received up into heaven and he sat down on the right hand of god ephesians chapter 1 i read from verse 20 ephesians 1 verse 20 which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. 
there should be no doubt in your mind from all those verses of scripture where Christ is where Christ is seated that right now he is on the throne it tells us in verse 21 far above all principality and power that he is is sitting at the throne room untouchable by any power any principality and anything that can weaken his position of authority is far above far above all authority and all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named the lord jesus christ is far above every personality whether in the sky or in the sea or land or anywhere is above every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church that is for the benefit of the church the throne is the seat of power when we talk about the throne we're talking about the very seat of authority christ intercedes for us seated on the throne is always answered whenever he prays even when he was on earth he said my father i know you always answer me how much more when he's seated on the throne of majesty on high is praying for you today he wishes the best for you he does he desires the best for you he prays the best for you spiritually and physically and you are going to have that in jesus name and then when we pray you know it it depends on where you are when you pray in your mind with your understanding in your faith in your doubt in thinking about yourself where do you pray where do you think you are when you are praying look at ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in christ jesus you see there are people they have this idea and this notion they are far away from God. And then they are sending message SOS. Save our soul unto a far away God. And they don't know whether God is answering them, hearing them or not. Or they think they are like Jonah in the depths of the sea. Or they are like Job. I look for God here. I can't find him. I look on this side. I can't find him. And they say, God, where are you? Or they think like they are like David. I mean, the midst of multitudes of enemies, they are gaping at me and guessing at me like lions. They want to drink up my flesh. They don't understand where they are. But we have settled it now, number one, that Jesus Christ is seated on the right hand of majesty. And we were seated with him. He has raised us up. He has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And it is from that throne room we're praying, we're making intercession. Irresistible prayer from the throne room. There are three points we're going to look at. Number one, the great intercessor on the throne. The great intercessor on the throne. Number two, is great intercession for our triumph is great intercession for our triumph number three our guided intercession from the throne our guided intercession which you were praying and we're not just praying according to our minds we're praying in a guided way it guides us into the kind of intercession we ought to make the kind of prayer we ought to pray. Number one, the great intercessor on the throne. 
uh, we have found many people that have prayed in Bible days. They were intercessors. We can, we can think about Moses. Where was he? He was in the wilderness praying for the children of Israel. They had gone away from the Lord. He came back from the mountain top. And then he came to the valley. And he was in the wilderness there. And he began to say, oh Lord, I know the people have gone astray. They've gone to worship idol. Lord, have mercy on them. And God answered. But when he was praying, he was not sitting on the throne. He was not standing beside the heavenly father. He was in the wilderness. We think about, jo about Joshua, great intercessor. The people of God, they have gone to Ai. And then they have been defeated. 36 of them were killed. And then he came and then he went on the ground. He wasn't on the throne. He was lying on the ground. And he put doors and ashes upon himself. And said, oh God, what am I going to do? When the children of Israel, when they turned their backs against their enemy, and then the enemies will all circle us and encompass us, and they're going to destroy us because of this defeat. And the Lord said, get up. There's sin in the camp. There's an Achan that had done something wrong. That's why you have the, the evil coming upon you. Take away that cause of defeat. And then I will answer you. You know, he was not on the throne. And then we're thinking about Daniel in Babylon. The Babylon of all places. That was an occultic place. Idolatrous place. An evil place. A place of spiritual darkness. But he prayed. And he said, oh Lord, we have seen. Yours is mercy. Ours is confusion. He was making intercession. But now we come to our own high priest. Greater than Moses. Our great high priest greater than Joshua our great high priest and is greater than Daniel and then he's gone up to heaven and it's from that place of authority and power is making it a session for us the point is this if God answered Moses in the wilderness he'll answer Christ on the throne if God answered Joshua when there was sin in the camp just by the side of Jericho, he'll answer Jesus on the throne. If God answered Daniel in Babylon, he'll answer Jesus Christ as he prays for you, prays for me, and prays for the church. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. See that? is now at the right hand of God. And there at the right hand of God is making intercession for us. When we talk about Jesus Christ praying for us, all that many people think about is John chapter 17. Yes, he prayed for us there. He was on us at that time. Some people think about when he was on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Yes, he prayed. He prayed for sinners to be forgiven. He was on the cross. But now from the earth to the cross, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. And now he sits. On the right hand of majesty on high. When he was on earth, he prayed. He was answered. When he was on the cross, he prayed. He was answered. And now he's gone to the Father in heaven. Seated on his throne. How much more will he be answered at this time? And I pray that you will realize all the fruit of the prayer of Jesus for you in Jesus' name. Look at this verse 34 again. Who is see that condemneth? When you give your life to the Lord, and when you abide in the Lord, and the devil is coming with accusation, condemnation, and when you are living in the word of God, maybe your mind, you have a weak mind, and your mind is saying, pointing to this and this and this, condemnation over condemnation, and the devil wants to take advantage of that. Because he's the accuser of the brethren. Then he says, it is Christ that died. And thank God he died for you. And then he says, Christ 
that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who is also making intercession for us, for you, for me, for everyone, for the church. And I pray that the prayer of Jesus will be answered for you. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself. He's saying, where Jesus Christ has entered, it's not a holy place here on earth made with hands. You see, the tabernacle of the children of Israel at the outer court and then the holy place and the holy of holies. And once a year, the high priest Aaron, he will enter to the holy of holies. He'll bring the request of the children of Israel. He'll bring to the almighty God over there. But that holy of holies was still here on earth. And then this is saying, Christ is beyond that. Christ is above that. He has not entered into an earthly holy place, but into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God for who? For us. He has gone to appear in the presence of God for us. I'm telling you something tonight. This is it. Some people think that the ministry of Jesus for us ended on the cross. When he said, it is finished. He died on the cross. And we always point ourselves to the cross. That's good. And we always cover ourselves in the blood of the Lamb. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And we think the ministry of Christ for you, for me, for the church ended on the cross but now this is sin he rose from the dead he went to heaven and then it says in heaven now now to appear in the presence of god for us if you knew that you will know that jesus christ is still having a ministry towards you right now he's praying for you he's interceding for you and he's praying that all the power you need for this present hour you'll have them in jesus name Hebrews chapter 7, we're reading from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He ever liveth. This is talking about his risen life. His glorified life, his presence in the presence of God by the side of the Lord. He ever lived to make intercession for the people that have come to him. Why is he making intercession? He says he's able also to save them to the uttermost. Able also to save them to the uttermost. You see, there are people after they are saved. Because of persecution around them, all the trials around them, all the temptations they face, they're wondering every time, will I survive? Will I go through this? Will I overcome? Can I be a victor? And look at everything surrounding me. And he's saying, it's not only your strength. If you're looking at your strength, am I strong enough? Am I able? Maybe you are not able, who knows, but he is able. And he says he's able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him because he ever lives. He ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest befits us, became us, who is holy, harmless undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. If Moses could have prayed for you, what a great privilege. But you have something greater. If Joshua could have prayed for you, what a great privilege. You have something greater. 
And if um, Daniel could have prayed for you, what a great privilege. But you have something greater. If Paul the Apostle could have prayed for you, what a great opportunity. You have something greater. And if your pastor could pray for you, what a great privilege. But you have something greater. Because he is higher, made higher than the heavens. And he is the one that is making intercession for you. First Peter chapter 3, verse 22. The great intercessor who is on the throne is seated on the throne and is praying for you. First Peter chapter 3, verse 22. Who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers be made subject unto him. That's the position of Christ who is praying for you. That is the place of Christ who is praying for you. That's the authority of Christ who is praying for you. And that is the sovereignty of the Christ who is praying for you. Angels are under his authority. Authorities are under his power, his dominion. Powers are under him. They are all subject to him. And it says, even though he's in heaven, at the right hand of God, there's one ministry he continues there. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He never gets tired. He's never frightened. He's never afraid. He knows that whatever he tells the Father, the Father is going to give him a yes, an answer. And he is praying for you with that confidence. And when you pray, you understand, it's not only your prayer, Christ on the throne, Christ seated on the right hand of majesty. He is praying for you too. Revelation chapter, 20, chapter 3 verse 21. Revelation chapter 3 verse 21. To him that overcometh. I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. I am set down with my father in his throne. And it's from that throne room that he is praying for you. Let's look at John chapter 11. John chapter 11, verse 22. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Martha said, not Jesus, Savior, friend. Your friend Lazarus is dead. For days she has been buried. But I know even now, even now, in this condition, in this situation, I know even now. Whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee, even now. At that time, he was not on the cross yet. At that time, he had not risen from the dead yet. Now, I but even now, even now, even now, seated on the right hand of majesty. And I know every prayer Jesus has ever prayed for you, God will answer. Every request the Lord has made for you, the Lord will answer. You're saying, can you remind me of some prayers the Lord has prayed for me? He prayed for you that you will come into the kingdom. That's how you came. He prayed for you that he'll give you the spirit of repentance. That's why you repented. He prayed for you that he'll give you the faith. The faith to believe that Jesus is Lord and Savior. That's how you believe. He prayed for you. He said, Simon, Simon. You can put your name there. Satan has desired to have you. That he may sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. The Lord has prayed for you that your faith will not fail. That you will not fall. That you will not backslide. And God has answered that prayer. Up till this moment, he has answered the prayer. Tomorrow, he'll keep on answering the prayer. And then next week, he'll keep on answering the prayer. And you will see the Lord face to face. The prayer of Jesus for you. That your faith will not fail. He'll keep on answering that in Jesus' name. Not only that, he has prayed for you. That you'll be sanctified. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I pray for them. 
I pray not for the world, but for them whom thou hast given unto me. And it is so sure as day and night are sure, it is so sure that Christ's prayer for your sanctification will be answered in Jesus' name. He has prayed for our unity, that we all will be united. That as he and the Father are one, I and my Father are one. We should not shed kind of lose courage and say, well, will, will the church ever be united? Of course, he's still praying that same prayer because he died for the church. Not for a divided church, a downtrodden church, a weak church, an anemic church, a kind of invested church, a church that is infested by the power of the enemy and the power of the devil. He prayed for a church strong and holy and united and the prayer of jesus for his church and this church will be answered in jesus name i know that even now whatsoever you ask of god he will give it you let's look at verse 41 verse 41 verse 41 then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid isn't that what the Lord is waiting for? He said, take here away the stone. He wants to pray. He wants to get Lazarus out of that grave. He wants to get you out of that condition. Out of that situation. But he says, take here away the stone. What's the stone? Something you just put over there. You sealed it up. You said, the end has come. There is no hope. The man is gone. The woman is gone. The situation is final. And then you put a stone there. You say, forget about it. We will endure the loss. And then he says, take here away the stone. He's waiting for that. So that his prayer will not be hindered. But the stone you put, you put there at the final scene. As if there's no change anymore. Take here away the stone. And then we're told in verse 41. Then... They took the stone away from the place where the dead wall was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. He has not even prayed. I thank thee because you have heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. Think about that. Now he's by the throne. I mean now as we're talking. So I've been on a retreat today. And then he knows your heart. He knows why you came to this retreat. Maybe you're coming for the first time. Maybe you've been coming before. There's a desire in your heart. You want healing for your body? Deliverance for your oppression? Childbearing for your barrenness? Jobs, employment for your unemployment? He knows your heart. And the Lord is praying for you. Every one of those desires, the Lord will fulfill. Because it says, Father, I know thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. We're coming to number two now. It's great intercession for our triumph. For our victory, for our overcoming life, Christ's great intercession. What do you need from John? Sorry, from Isaiah. Let's start from Isaiah. We'll come to John later. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12. The intercession that Christ is making for you, making for me, making for our friends, making for our loved ones. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12, Therefore will I divide him a portion of the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. He made intercession for the transgressors. You know what? The Lord never writes off any sinner, any transgressor to say, that's final. 
they've gone too far they do too many bad things there's no hope for them never he makes intercession for the transgressors isn't that the reason why Saul of Tarsus was saved Paul that's why he was saved even though he was a great sinner the chief of sinners the mercy of God came to him because Christ made intercession for transgressors what have you done that you think you've gone so far what evil have you committed you think you've gone so far and that means then no hope for me no mercy for me of course there's hope of course there's mercy because he makes the intercession for the transgressors luke chapter 23 luke chapter 23 verse 34 23 34 then said jesus father forgive them for they do not what they do they know not what they do oh i thought they knew i thought they knew they were crucifying christ yes they knew i thought they knew that they were rejecting him because of their envy yes they knew i thought they were deliberately accepting barabbas instead of christ yes they knew that but they didn't know the ramifications and the extent of the evil that they were doing to themselves they know not the consequence of what they were doing father forgive them what a great intercession a great prayer and many times as you do what you do if you have not been born again you don't know what you're doing you think you know you think you know your purpose and your goal and you think this is why i'm doing what i'm doing but you don't know the extent or the consequence of what you are doing you know many things that people do they don't know the extent you know a brother just preached now spoke about temptation and he spoke about the temptation that came to abraham and then he said now but he came to the lord and god forgave him of course god forgave him did he know that the fruit that will come out of hagar will continue plaguing us and destroying us because now out of the fruit that came from hagar see what has happened and see the all the wars and all the troubles between israel and the surrounding nations not only that it has spilled all over here between those people on that side and these people on that side is still the consequence even though it, what they thought is just you know have a child to replace because i need a child and because i need a child why don't you go into hagar they didn't know what they were doing father forgive them they know not what they do they know not what they do and when he said crucify him let his blood be upon us let what will be be we don't care did they know that they'll be scattered all over the world did they know that they are going to suffer all the thousands of years father forgive them they know not what they do many times the things you do they look small they look very simple and they look ordinary but you don't know the consequence father forgive them what a great intercession and i pray that your forgiveness will be real in your life in jesus name we're looking at luke chapter 22 verse 31 simon simon the lord said behold satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat but i have prayed for thee the lord was looking at the future and simon was looking at the present i don't need all that prayer i don't need all that intercession I can hold out i can stand i'm okay i can make it nobody can confront me but the lord knew the future and he knew what was going to happen to him a few days to that time simon simon satan has desired to have you why was satan desire to have me because satan is looking ahead to the day of pentecost where you will preach 
and 3,000 people will get converted. And Satan says, this man having a gift like this and this authority like this, I want to have him. Why will Satan desire to have me, Simon? Because he's looking at chapter 3 of Acts. When you will say, silver and gold have I none. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. He wants to get you away from that. He looks at the future and he says, if I leave this man alone, if I leave this woman alone, 3,000 in chapter 2 will come to Christ. And then that lame man in chapter 3 will rise up. If I leave this man alone in chapter 5, a shadow will be healing the sick. I don't want that to happen. Satan has desired to have you. And the Lord knew the future. And he said, I'm not going to allow this one to fall. I'm not going to allow this one to give up because Jesus too was looking at the future. He is weak today. He is going to be strong tomorrow. If you are weak today, you will be strong tomorrow in Jesus' name. He appears not to understand himself. A boisterous man. A self-confident man. And yet, a man who left to himself will be a failure. But the Lord looked at the future. He said, Peter, Simon, Simon, I cannot allow you to go your way. I cannot allow you to just be yourself. And I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Your faith will not fail. That's the intercession the Lord is praying for us. And when thou art converted, strengthened, thy brethren he'll be a source of strength to the body of christ you will be a source of strength to the body of christ did i hear your amen, amen. we're looking at john chapter 7 john chapter 7 is praying for us john chapter 7 verse 17 sanctify them through thy truth what a prayer what a prayer there was something in each of those disciples their own propensity to evil. Sanctify them, Lord. Or something in them. The Adamic nature. The carnality. Sanctify them, Lord. You know the difference between worldliness and carnality? You know there are many people. They say, praise the Lord. I'm free from worldliness. I'm praising the Lord for you too and with you. That you are free from worldliness. But there's another thing. Apart from worldliness. It's called carnality. And it's not enough to be free from worldliness. That's good. They're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. I have chosen them out of the world. Free from worldliness, but not free from carnality. The envy, the jealousy, the competition, and the self-promotion, and the self-confidence, and the selfishness, self-centeredness, the carnality within, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The Lord is praying for you now. I said the Lord is praying for you now. And the prayer is praying is that the almighty God will sanctify you, sanctify us, sanctify his church. God will answer that prayer. Verse 20, neither pray I for these alone. But for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. That's the prayer that Jesus Christ prayed. That's the prayer he continues to pray. Now on the right hand of majesty on high, as thou Father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me he will answer i said he will answer chapter 14 john chapter 14 verses 16 and 17 it says and i will pray the father he said i'm going to the father i'm going to heaven and i'm going to pray to the father when i get there to heaven and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. You ask me, how did those disciples receive the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost? They prayed. Yes, I know they prayed. They waited on the Lord. Yes, I know they waited on the Lord. They tarried in Jerusalem. Yes, I know they tarried in Jerusalem 
all the tarrying, all the waiting, all the praying, all the self-examination, all the passion, all the desire. Give us the Holy Ghost. We'll do nothing. Why it not for the fact that Jesus Christ was making intercession for them. And all your tarrying, all your praying, all your eagerness, all your desire, all your passion, all your pursuit, all your go-getting, be a go-getter. All that will amount to nothing except that Jesus is praying for you. If you have not received the Holy Ghost yet, during this retreat, you are going to have the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus is praying for you. Look at verse 16. And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you. How long? forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you is praying that you will have the power of the holy ghost you are going to have that power in jesus name Look at chapter 24 of Luke. Luke chapter 24 verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued from, with power from on high. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. We're reading from verse 22 Acts chapter 2 from verse 22 ye men of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as see yourselves know he being delivered by the determinate counsel of God and for knowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. But now it says, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that it should be holding of it. He rose from the dead. Then he went to heaven. When he went to heaven, what did he do? Look at verse 33. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he prayed to the Father. The Father answered, and the Father gave him that right to send the Holy Ghost upon the believers. It says, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shared for this which you now see and uh, hear. So then we understand that Jesus Christ is praying for us. Not only that, the Holy Ghost is also standing by his side, praying for us as well. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're reading from verse 26 and verse 27. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Christ praying for us. The Holy Ghost praying for us. Christ and the Holy Ghost joining together, making intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. Verse 27, and he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Notice that he maketh intercession. Not that he made in the past or he will make in the future. Right now, he's making intercession for us, the saints of God, according to the will of God. 
And you know, there's something that makes people, that, uh, makes people get confused when they are praying. They want to pray. Now, they know that if it's the will of God, God will do it. But how do I know the will of God? This is how you know the will of God. Anything God has promised is the will of God. God will never promise anything that is not his will. Look at the word of God. See his promises. Those promises express his will. Number two, his provision. Anything he has provided. He never provides anything which is not his will. How do you give somebody something and say, this is not my will. I don't want you to have this, but you know, I provide it for you. No, his provision is his will. Number three, his precept. When he commands anything, that's his will. That's his will. If God commands anything, that's a precept. That is his will. Number four, his prophecies. All the predictions and the prophecies. That's the will of God. When he says, this will happen, that will happen. That's his will. That's his will. And when you pray according to the promises, you're praying according to his will. When you pray according to his provision, that's his will. When you pray according to his precepts, that's his will. When you pray according to his prophecies and predictions, that's his will. His praise, whatever will bring glory to him, whatever will bring praise unto him, that's his will. Lord, I'm asking for this because this will honor your name. This will praise you. This will glorify you. All those things according to his praise, that's his will. His past prayers. The prayers that Jesus preached in the past, that's his will. Any prayer he preached in the past for anybody, that's his will. And then our profit, anything that will profit us, anything that will benefit us, he daily loads us with benefits. Our prophet is his will. Now we come to our own prayer. We have seen the prayer of Jesus. We have seen the intercession of Jesus. Now our guided intercession from the throne. First of all, remember when we pray, we're not praying like, you know, we're not praying like Daniel. You know how Daniel prayed. And I've heard some believers, they say, you know what? If we're going to pray and receive an answer, we have to really switch. And we have to really take hold of the principalities and powers. And I'm saying, why? Oh, they said, do you remember Daniel? Yes, I do. Do you remember how he prayed? Yes, I do. And do you remember that for 21 days, he prayed and prayed and prayed. And then the angel eventually came and he said, 21 days ago, when you started the prayer, the Lord sent me. But then the prince of Pasha hindered me that I couldn't break through. Now I have come to reveal the mind of God unto you. They say, when they pray, they think of Daniel. I don't think of Daniel. You know why? Daniel on earth, completely. And then God in heaven, completely. In between Daniel on earth and God in heaven, there were the principalities and the powers. The prince of the power of the air. And then the prince of Persia. And when the angel was coming, then the prince kind of delayed the answer, the angel. And he fought it through for 21 days before he could come. But now, where are we? Look at now. I read it to you before I read it again. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. And he has raised us up together. He has. This past tense already. This has happened already. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See what the Lord has done. The Lord has transformed, has transferred us. Literally translated us spiritually from where Daniel was. And we have crossed over. And then we're seated with Christ on the throne. And when we're praying, we're not praying like Daniel prayed and we're waiting for so many days and weeks and months and years. Look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. 
giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. It says we are partakers of the inheritance of saints who are in the light. We're not in Babylon. We're not in darkness. And spiritually, we have been translated. Look at verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has. Not that he will. He has delivered you already. Have you gone to sleep? He has delivered you already. Verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. And he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You understand? This Daniel was in the kingdom of Babylon. And then the kingdom of God was up there. And from the kingdom of God, an answer was sent to him. Between this kingdom and that kingdom. The principalities and the paths of the air. The kind of delay, the angel bringing the answer. But now he says, we are translated. And he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness. And he has translated us into the kingdom of his son. When the kingdom was him. In the kingdom of the son. And he is seated on the throne. And we are seated with him. That's why when we pray, the answer will come. Your own answer tonight will come. Verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Thank God our sins are forgiven. I said our sins are forgiven. First John, first John chapter 5, reading from verse 14. And this is the confidence we have in him. As you pray tonight, I want you to have this in your mind. You have confidence in the Lord. I said you have confidence in the Lord. That if we ask anything, anything according to his will. What's his will? His promises. If we ask anything according to his will. What's his will? His provision. What's his will? His precepts. His prophecies and predictions. Whatever will bring praise unto him. And the past prayers he prayed for the leper. I will be thou cleansed. For the one that was sick, I will be healed. That's his will. His past prayers. And then our prophet. A prophet. Anything that will profit us spiritually, materially. Will profit us in a pilgrimage towards heaven. That's his will. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. In verse 15, and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. We have. I said we have. I have. I have. You have it in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, what do you need from verse 9? But as it is written, I has not seen. What your eyes have never seen, they are coming your way. Ears have not heard. What your ears have never heard, you are going to receive. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. We're going to get deeper in the Lord, and the Lord is going to give us great deep things in Jesus' name. The benefits of Calvary, they are coming to you. The benefits of the cross of Christ, they are coming your way. And the blessings of the Lord will overshadow, will, will kind of, will overwhelm your life even tonight in Jesus' name. Psalm 68, Psalm 68, verse 19. Psalm 68, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us 
with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth me with benefits. Are you there? Lord of blessing. Lord of benefits. Loads of answered prayer. In your mind, translate, be transferred and be translated out of where you are and see yourself seated. Imagine yourself, visualize yourself seated by the right hand of majesty on high, seated with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there's not a great distance between you and that God. Just close your eyes and say, Lord, that's what I need, that's what I need, that's what I need. And Jesus, you put those prayers in the hands of Jesus. You say, Lord, I desire this. I need this. I need this spiritually, materially, in my family. I need this. I need this. Let your prayers pass on into the hands of Jesus. And then by the throne, Jesus will present you to the Father. And right there, he will transfer it back to you. Prayers are answered tonight. Yokes are broken tonight. Sicknesses are healed tonight. Oppressions are taken away tonight. Impossibilities are possible tonight. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Remember, we're now at the throne room of God. And we're making intercession and praying. And we're passing those prayers into the hands of Jesus. Our high priest, our great high priest. You tell the Lord, what do you want? What do you need? For you to be strong, for you to be mighty, for the power of the Lord to walk in your life, the Lord is going to do it. Just, just breathe that prayer to the Lord and just tell the Lord, Oh Lord, this is my need. Oh Lord, this is my desire. Oh Lord, this is my passion. Oh Lord, this is the provision you have provided. I'm asking for tonight. And the Lord will do it in your life. Open your mouth and pray unto the Lord. And say, Lord, here we are tonight. Here am I tonight. And I want you to do this for me. Are you saved? Praise the Lord. If you are still feeling the guilt, the condemnation of sin, remember. The Lord Jesus prayed for you already. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. That forgiveness is coming now. That salvation is coming now. Receive it. Accept it. He prayed for your sanctification. If you find that carnality within you, that Adamic nature within you, that tendency to fall, the tendency to do evil, the tendency to yield to the desires of the enemy, he prayed for your sanctification, purity, holiness of heart. You tell the Lord, oh Lord, here am I, here am I, here am I, Lord. You are seized with the spirit of fear, afraid of the future. Afraid of the actions and activities of the enemy. Afraid of a curse. Tell the Lord. And transfer your prayer into the hands of Jesus. And say, Lord, this is what I'm asking for. This is what I'm asking for. That's what I'm asking for. And transfer that into the hands of a great high priest. And then the high priest will present it to the Father. Seated on the throne. And the Lord will do it. You're weak. You feel your strength getting away from you. Tell the Lord. Say, Lord, strengthen me. Power for this present hour. Tell the Lord. And pass your prayers to the hands of Jesus. And say, Lord Jesus, I know you are making intercession for me. And you are seated on the throne. This is what I'm asking. I pass it into your hand. Pass it unto the Father. The answer will come immediately. Are you sick? Was the sickness? Was the name of the sickness? 
Jesus has a name above every name. And you can tell the Lord, oh Lord, this is the name of the sickness. But I know you have a name above the name of this sickness. Heal me, Lord. Accept it. It's done. It's done. Yokes are broken. Afflictions are taken away. Oppressions are taken away. Pass those prayers into the hands of Jesus and see Jesus presenting the prayer unto the Father because he's seated by his side. Believe it's done. If you have not received the power of the Holy Ghost, you've been saved sanctified but you don't have the power the fire power coming with fire to burn every chaff out of your life why don't you present a prayer before the lord lord i need the power of the holy ghost and pass that prayer to the hands of jesus he will pass it to the father and the answer has come already. You have a challenge with any member of your family. That member of the family is in a condition that gives you a burden. Your heart. Mention his name. Mention her name. And say, Lord, this is what I want for this person, this loved one. And pastor prayer to the hands of Jesus, seated on the throne. He'll pass it to the Father. The answer has come. This year that is coming to an end will not end before the answer will come. You will not go into the new year with the old problem, the problem of the old year. The answer is here. The answer is here. The answer has come. Great God, mighty God. The God who answers prayer. He will answer your prayer. He has answered already. Just praise the Lord and thank the Lord that the Lord has answered your prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Have you prayed? I said, have you prayed? Have you asked for something definite and specific? If God gives you that thing, will you recognize that this is what I prayed for? He has given it to you. Why don't you just raise the hand to the Lord and praise to the Lord. Amen. Amen. From tonight, look for that thing because it's there already. Tomorrow you wake up, thank God for that thing because that thing is there already. Your soul, your spirit, your body, your family, your life, and your concern for somebody very close to you, the Lord has answered. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people tonight. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ seated on the throne of majesty on high. And Lord, we know Every prayer that is prayed tonight will pass to the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, we know you have presented it to the Father. We have got the answer. Those who have not been saved, Lord, we believe they are saved in Jesus' name. The backslider has come back. You have forgiven their backsliding. You have restored the joy of salvation. 
And the peace of God is now in their hearts in Jesus' name. Those who are asking you for the removal of carnality and sanctification. Oh Lord, thank you because you have answered in Jesus' name. And those who are asking for the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you because Father, you have answered the prayer of Jesus, a great high priest. And you have shed forth your power and the Holy Ghost upon your people tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, all those who have asked for healing of any pain, any sickness, any infirmity, we thank you because they are healed. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe, receive your healing in Jesus' name. Those who have been afraid of curse, all the curses, all the yokes are broken. All the mountains are removed. And Father, we thank you all those prayers that we prayed. Lord, remove this mountain. Lord, remove this sickness. Lord, remove this infirmity. Lord, remove these impossibilities. We pass them on to the hands of Jesus. He has passed them to the Father. And the Father immediately has answered our prayer. Oh Lord, we rejoice in the answer in Jesus' name. Lord, tonight as we go to sleep, we go to sleep with the joy of the Lord. With the assurance our prayers are answered. We wake up tomorrow morning with thanks and praises on our knees that God has answered our prayer. And the problems of this old year will not follow us to the new year. New life has come. New strength has come. New power has come. New joy has come. A new experience has come for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, let your joy reign in every life. Answer everyone without an exception. And bring us, Lord, to that place where we know and know and know for sure that no impossibilities in our lives anymore. Confirm it for everyone, Lord. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. For the God of the mountains is the God of the valley. When things go wrong, he makes them right. For oh, the God of the good times is the God of the bad times. The God of the day is the God of the night. Everybody now, for the Lord of the mountains is the God of the valley. When things go wrong, he makes them right. For the God of the good times is the God of the bad times. The God of the day is the God of the night. For the last time, for the Lord of the mountains is the God of the valleys. When things go wrong, he makes them right. For the God of the good times is the God of the bad times, the God of the day.